Welcome back, everybody, to the another restart of the Last Man In podcast. We've got Cam. Say something. Oh. You're here. Hey. <laughs> Matt. Hello. <laughs> and, and Dan's not here. No. But, we can never have all four of us. We did no, have all four of we us. We did have once. all four of us, and I had recording issues. We tried to record two weeks ago. It just it, yeah. it failed. Well, or maybe you murdered Dan, and he's in these walls right now. <laughs> Oh, we're back to this again already. <laughs> Scariest walls I've ever been. Seen They're wood paneling walls. Yeah. There's nothing scary about them. Very... I know ha- you've never seen Freddy vs. Jason or Jason or any Freddy ever. That's why they're scary, Greg. These... Do you know what? Slasher movies aren't scary. They're more entertaining than anything else. Oh, well. Tell that to me in my nightmares growing up. You know what's actually a scary movie? The Conjuring. Actually, the, uh, oh. a friend of ours, Kevin, all of ours, he sent me an article saying the scariest movie based off of Heartbeats Per Minute in the last 20 years is uh, Sinister. Oh, yes, I heard this. Scariest, yes. uh, scariest jump scare of all the movies that they tested was uh, Insidious when the guy, the Darth Maul guy. Goes, oh, gotcha, the, when the, devil, like, when the yeah. devil's there. Yeah. From behind the table. That is, yeah. that gets you. The average resting heart rate of Sinister's, uh, it's 86 heartbeats per minute. Because you're just is, like... Oh, yeah, because you're, you're on edge. On edge. But Insidious, it normally spiked upwards of 50 beats per second <laughs> at that one jump Dude, scare. it came out of nowhere. They yeah. were just talking, and then all of a sudden the devil's there, and you're like, oh, God. Yeah, and then you're oh, climbing the walls, and then you're like, what's going on? Yeah. But yeah, anyway. Well, there's that's that. That's why it's scary. Um, your favorite song is in that movie. Oh, tiptoe through the tulips. Yeah, I'll never forget that. Yeah. <laughs> you, guys, you guys ever see the kid behind the counter? Before the scene, yeah. I didn't notice yeah. it until the second time I but saw that that's, movie. I watched it the second time with you, and you're like, I fucking hate this song. I, f- I hate this song. It's the worst. I hate it. They Cause... take great kid songs and ruin them. I, you know what? How much did it cost to buy the Barney movie? I mean, Barney's song. <laughs> a lot. Imagine putting like... that one into a scary one. <laughs> just winning the lottery and like buying it and then making a scary movie. Yeah, like, that's what I do with my lottery I winnings, is buying you, the Barney song. You love me. Oh, my God. I can... <laughs> And like While someone's like holding their dead child. Young, oh my god. <laughs> oh hey. Well, well maybe. We're happy happy family. Family. You know what? That's how the movie's gonna open, actually. Oh, but it's no. gonna be about a toddler little daughter child in the corner be like, Mom, do you like Barney? What? <laughs> and then Barney's gonna like morph out of the walls. So, like, you know when uh uh paranormal activity, when they use like the Xbox 360 and he's like he put the, the connect, dots on yeah. the wall. Yeah, the connect, and then yeah. you just see like the demon come out of the chair. It's gonna be Barney's like Sure do, kids. <laughs> no! Anyways, I took a turn. Either way, we're back. We're here. We're For those that uh, have sat through the first three minutes of this, this is actually a hockey podcast. <laughs> uh, you would never know if you just listened to the first five minutes of every episode. It's, uh, it just... Takes its own turn before I can bring Cam back in. It's just chaos and you like haven't been around for so long, so it's like you have all this pent up. Yeah. Tandem, or tangents to go on. Totally. And, like, Catch Up Cam is just the episode today, because I have missed everything. Do you know there was a draft? I do, because I was very upset that Alexis Lafreniere got... The Rangers won the but, opportunity to draft him. I was very upset at that. Who did you want to win it? Uh, I just... Okay, now that I'm getting older, I just kind of wanted a team that, like, actually could use him. Not just like, like, of course I wanted Girona. That would have been sweet. But it's like Minnesota realistically was the team I wanted because like they can make do with some good guys for like a long time because they, they decided to add it to their team. Hey, well, for, not all of us want to just <laughs> sign two guys for like a combined, what, 25 mil for a thousand years in Parisian Suter. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they really made a oops, they, they oops on that ruined one. The con- they ruined the free agency market. You can't sign a free agent for over seven years now. Well, thanks, Minnesota. For longer than seven. Uh, it is that, because Chuck Fletcher? Uh, who signed those deals? I'm pretty sure it was Fletcher because he is now in Philadelphia. <laughs> Good. I wanted J.D.R. Yeah. for that long. Mm. Oh, you know what? I also wanted Kevin Hayes that long. Mm-hmm. Do you know who else that you might have had if it wasn't matched? Who was it? Oh, Shea Weber. Yeah. Ah, uh, hold on. That was Paul Holmgren. That because yeah. Paul Holmgren doesn't like country music, so he was just going after Nashville. That was a vendetta <laughs> against that city. Oh, okay. That was different. Oh, okay. He didn't even care about Shea Weber that yeah. much. He was he just, just trying to bankrupt Nashville. He literally <laughs> did. They were like, no, no, his contract is going to be a million. They're like, 
but it says 13. It's like, I know you're going to owe 12 on July 1st. <laughs> good luck, Sasha. Good luck matching this, morons. Yeah. Oh, no. And they did. And then Shea Weber's like, well, guess I'm here now. And then he gets shipped off to Montreal not too long after. In which we thought was a great trade. Well, At the time. I did. I, I don't know about how you I Honestly, thought. I thought it was a trade where Nashville got better and Montreal got worse. And now you look at that trade and not Montreal's so got their captain. <laughs> P.K. Subban can barely stay in the league right now. Like, he's, he's just not what he used to be. New Jersey? He's in New Jersey, yeah. How many years does he have left? Two. Is that it? Yeah, in New probably. Jersey? Yeah. Who knew? Wow. Well, no. okay, sorry, I'll let you get back. No, 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 like, I, who knew that he would end up there? But it's funny, because going back through old episodes, we just, we used to really, really give Mark Bergevin a tough time. And yeah, then going yeah, into yeah. this year's offseason, I was like, you know what, Mark Bergevin's actually done a pretty good job, you know, brought in Thomas Tatar for basically nothing, he's, uh, well, you, you think know, he made... Tatar and Suzuki for Patch Reddy? Exactly. That's a win. That's Ex- a win. Exactly, right? And especially considering the fact that Patch Reddy wasn't going to stay, and um, he wasn't happy there. So realistically, he's done a good job there. He's he signed Jeff Petrie to a good deal. A guy that I used to think wasn't a very good defenseman has turned into a very good defenseman. Um, obviously, well, we just didn't think he was good with the Oilers. That was the only problem. That was probably <laughs> it. Yeah. And then obviously the Jonathan Duran situation for Mikhail Sergachev. Uh, but now that's like, the one blip. Yeah. But that's a but. But yeah. now I'm like, oh yeah, he's a pretty good GM. And then he went out and got Jake Allen, and I'm still on the fence if that's a good deal or not. But then he had this year's offseason, and I'm just like, again, I don't understand what he's doing sometimes. Who? Well, who did he bring? Well, in? he signed he signed Tyler Toffoli, which I like that deal. How long? Uh, four years, I yeah, believe. I think four by four. Or yeah, something like, like that. it was Ooh. it was a pretty reasonable uh, deal. Why didn't Toffoli stay with the Canucks? Or no, they have no cap. They have oh. no oh, okay. money in, um, and they have to sign Hughes and Pedersen next year. Yeah, <laughs> they're screwed. <laughs> yeah, they have they have no money. They're paying. Uh, Louis Erickson still six million dollars. They have Jay Beagle making three. They have Antoine Roussel making three point five. So they lost Markstrom. They lost Tanev. They lost. Um, Wait, where did, Mark, where did Markstrom go? Both of both the not both Calgary Tanev and Markstrom went to Calgary, Whoa. which we'll touch on. Okay. Um, but yeah, and then then they made the uh, did they trade? They got Josh Anderson, and then they signed Josh Anderson for all the money in the world, and I. Yeah, I was. I think he could turn into a good player, but he's just. It's, it's a bit of an overpay for me. So the way I look at it is, kind of like the theory I have behind it is that, let's pay this guy. He's one of one of a kind, right? Because there's not that many power forwards left in hockey. What I heard was he's a discounted version of Tom Wilson. Is kind of what they brought up on Twitter. But he's not a discount when you're paying five and a half well, million no, no. dollars. There, but you're paying him more. Like I, yeah, I'm saying, like. As, like, a player, he's not as good as Tom Wilson, but he's getting paid more than Tom Wilson. So yeah. everyone's kind of chirping Montreal about it. So, like, realistically, this guy should be making three, three and a half, and then they give him five and a half million dollars. And there's nothing wrong with that deal, necessarily, but now you're cash-strapped to that, especially with a flat cap. You still owe Weber 7.8 mil for the next six years. Um, these types of contracts, like, as good as Weber is, he's 35. He's got to play this contract till he's 41. Josh Anderson's still young enough that this contract shouldn't be that ineffective. Well, you know but, what? When, we, when Tom Wilson signed, we all made fun of Capitals for it, and now it's a steal of a contract, if you ask me. So, is that, are we going to be saying the same thing about Josh Anderson in three to four years? Maybe, I don't know. But it is historically accurate. You look at a lot of power forwards in the NHL, the Wayne Simmons, uh, Milan Lucic. Right around 30 is when they fall off a cliff. They don't. They're not able to... Their body cannot maintain that it's same really beating bad all the time. Like, look at like Mike Richards as well, right? Yeah. He was great in LA where their first cup run, and he was the fourth line center on their second one two years later. Out of the league. Yeah. Couldn't couldn't get in. Yeah. Now, granted, there were some underlying factors to that as well, but he had that comeback run with Washington and then fell off again. So, yeah, I, I, I agree with you. But this team, the one thing about the Montreal Canadiens that I will say is they still don't have a bona fide number one center uh, after shipping away Max Domi for Josh Anderson. Um, even though Max Domi, I think, played the majority. He was playing on the fourth line in, yeah. the, in the bubble. Yeah, so, like, Philip Deneau is their guy, but realistically, going into next year, the only guys they have signed are on the offense are Jonathan Drouin, uh, Josh Anderson, Tyler Toffoli, who's making 4.25 nice. for the next That's it's not a much. Real good contract, really good contract. Right? Gallagher gets his pay raise to 6.5, which I really like that contract. Oh, he's a heart-soul guy. He's yeah. 
You gotta pay him for what he's done. If, if Weber wasn't there, he'd be your captain. Mm. And then Paul Barron at three point four. Other than that, everybody else is uh, up. So it's gonna be an expensive year. Gonna be a very expensive year, especially when you're thirteen million in goalies. That's just the furnace cam, okay? It's heating up because no, it's cold. I n- no, no. <laughs> you're like looking. You're like, my eyes went big weird? because I immediately thought of Shadow of the Colossus. And oh. I thought of thinking like, looking behind me. Mm, I'm like, well, well, something very big is about to be behind yeah, me. Yeah, don't worry. Because um, they have the Jeff Petrie extension comes into terms next year. Uh, Brennan Gallagher. And then they have these other contracts. So, so I know that we look at like right now, like for next, like the year after. Like, what, what are they going to be at? Uh, going the into the season? Yeah, going into, like, uh, next season up. The season projected cap hit is $65 million. They have $16 million to sign <laughs> Thomas Tatar, Philip Deneau, Joel Armia, Ar- Arturi Lekkinen, Jordan Wheel, Jasperi Kotkaniemi, Kut- and they still have to sign Charles Houdon. But their decor is basically signed, minus Victor Mete going into next year. I would, I would really appreciate if they didn't re-sign Armia and he came back to the Jets. I miss Armia. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the thing is, too, is they have to look at how they're going to st- strategically sign these guys and position themselves for the expansion draft as well. Well, there's no way that they're signing Deneau because he's looking for, like, $7 million apparently. Yeah, he Seven wants, mil- he wants to be a first Deneau. line. Yeah, he wants to be a first he's, line he's, He feels he is. He's a, he's a good centerman. Like, he's two-way? Two-way, very yep. good. His offensive numbers are decent, Seven million. but, like, defensively he's really good. So. Philip Deneau. Mm-hmm. It's, the, it's, the, it's what we're living in with the cap. Yeah, it's the way it is. I've, First and second line players get paid, and then everyone else has to just, you know, Make not get do. paid. <laughs> yeah, you, you sign a bunch of uh, ragtag veterans for a uh, league minimum, and that's all you get. That's what the Leafs did. I love the Leafs signings. Yeah? Absolutely. Yeah. Joe Thornton and Wayne Simmons for a combined $2.25 million? Buckle up. That's a great deal. I guess we'll just talk uh, talk Leafs. We'll talk. Yeah. There's no order to this. I like. No, I wanted to, but realistically, well, it's the first time. Over, well, no, no, no. It's the first time we've gotten together and talked in a podcast that's actually recording for a while. Because we tried to do this once and yeah. we had recording uh, difficulties. Demons. Well, it is a it is a house that is seventy years old, and you know. That's it. No more. We're already in the basement. That's yeah. no more spooks. <laughs> no more spooks. Mm-mm. No, nothing about the last homeowner dying inside the house. Nothing like that. Well, that, that's different. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Anyways, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, we got hard. morbid here. Uh, yeah. So yeah, no, the Leafs have gone out and they, they they acquired. Well, first of all, I guess we got to talk about the summer of Dubas. There is so much to talk about with the way they played in that Columbus series, which was horrendous for the most part. Like I was, I quit on the team. I realistically did, especially in game four when they were down 3 nothing. I was like, I'm done. Trade everybody. The only guys I would keep are Matthews, and that's it. And then they came back and won that game. You probably jizzed in your fucking pants, didn't I, you? So, <laughs> do, you want, do you want me to go through the, the, the emotions? The, the emotional emotions? roller coaster that so, was that game? <laughs> I, I was like, I was all prepared. I got home from work. I think it was an afternoon game. It was on a Friday, and I was just prepped to, to watch it. Um, I think I ordered Skip the Dishes in. What uh, what did you skip the dishes? Uh, so I think it was Leopold's Tavern. Wow! Yeah, so poutine, pub food, poutine and uh, chicken fingers. Oh my god! So I was like prepped to watch it, and this is after they just blew a three goal lead the night before. So now they're playing this game. Well, that was when Pierre Luc Dubois was just unstoppable. Yeah, and he looked like the best player in hockey. Um, <laughs> so they they go down three nothing. I'm just like I I'm done with the team. I'm like I this team sucks. Frederick Anderson sucks. Morgan Riley sucks. Um, Mitch Marner's not living up to his contract. The John uh, the John Tavares signing was a, a miss. They need to get rid of Andreas Janssen. They need to get rid of Kasperi um, Kasperi Captain. Oh, why the hell? Why did they hell did they <laughs> trade uh, Alex Kerfoot uh, or trade away Nazem Kadri for Alex Kerfoot? Like we need him. And then they score one goal with uh, I think William Nylander scores the first one. I'm like, it's not happening like this. We're not <laughs> letting it happen. Then they score the second goal, and I'm like. You can't be giving me hope. And then what happens? They lose the draw. The puck hits and gets stuck in the net. On the outside of the net. Leafs go down. They score. They tie the game 3-3. I'm like, if you're going to do this just to lose in overtime, no. I'm not doing I still hadn't bought back in. And then they win in overtime and completely throw up a muffin in game five. Um, like, So you skipped muffins in game five. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was like, I'm going to be sick. Yeah. Full muffin. <laughs> Carrot. Wow. So after that, I just basically said that there needs to be a change for the Leafs. 
there was one guy, there's two guys that played consistently well in that Columbus Blue Jacket series. It was Austin Matthews and Jason Spezza. And Kyle Clifford. And, well, and Kyle Clifford was pretty good, but the fourth line never played. The man needed yeah. a contract, and, man. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so you had you had these issues, um, and I was like, they they need to make some changes. They drop the bombshell. They trick uh, Kasperi Captain. They essentially get a first rounder back, and they get uh, another prospect as well in the deal. Um, pretty fine deal. I thought they won the trade, and honestly, it gave them an opportunity to recoup what they gave away with the Patrick Marlowe deal from. Carolina, where they now, because where they finished, not only did they have a chance at a lottery pick, but uh, they had 13th overall. Oh, and they were so close, too. They were so close. It almost <laughs> won. But overall, so they get rid of Kip- Captain, they get rid of Janssen. Uh, where did Janssen go? Janssen went to New Jersey. Um, and they got a pick back? They got Joey Anderson back, who's a guy that's played maybe 20 games in the NHL. Okay, uh, you you have to promise us you're yeah. not gonna get mad when Kasperi Kapanen absolutely will definitely play with Sidney Crosby this year, <laughs> and he's absolutely definitely putting up at least fifty points without trying. I won't I won't be mad because it's it's a move that Toronto needed to make for a cap for for cap reasons and for a cap. Well, for cap and then yeah, haha, um, and then they got a first round pick out of it. They they drafted a- uh, Amarov with it, who's a very skilled young player in the KHL right now. But I wanted them to get Seth Jarvis because the Winnipeg connection. But uh, and he's unbelievable. But there was no way that he was going to slide to 15 because if Carolina didn't pick him at 13, um, Edmonton would have picked him at 14. What's but, the Carolina connection to? Or just they the, just like skilled forwards? They just I don't know if they have a well no because they have so they have Stelio Mateos who's in their f- right. farm system so. Yep. He's playing in Charlotte. Now, granted, he's been off and on with hockey. I think he actually played this last year. But he was diagnosed with cancer, I believe. And he was battling through that. And then uh, they also have uh, Morgan Geeky, who did have some time with Carolina in the bubble. Oh. And he's actually a solid player as well. So, uh, And then now you have Seth Jarvis added to that as well. So they, I think they have three, three Winnipeggers. So. Oh, sweet. Yeah. Okay, sorry. So back to Winnipeg. Or uh, Toronto. Tr- back to Toronto. So, yeah. So they, they needed to move some space. They don't re-sign CC, thank God. They don't re-sign Barry. Again, thank God. Uh, well, we knew that wasn't happening. Yeah, where did, where wasn't did they go? So CC signed in Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh for $1.25 million. Yeah, and then Barry and then went to Edmonton. To Edmonton. For like three point one two five. Tyson Barry went to Edmonton. Yeah, you know, he's gonna run yeah that'll fix play. that'll fix things. Well, that's sure. they have, I think, Larson... Or is it Clef? One of one of them is injured for the beginning of the year and probably most but of the year. Yeah, because what I would what I would want is I'd want to replace Adam Larson. Wow, I was sorry, I was like burping at the same time. Yeah. I'd want to replace Adam Larson with Tyson Barry. They're the same skill level defensively and offensively. Same skill level. As much as I wanna poop on that Taylor Hall for Adam Larson deal, like Adam Larson's still a serviceable defenseman. And he's what the Oilers need. And Taylor Hall is on his third team since. <laughs> yeah, that's true too. And we'll we'll touch on that today as well. But uh yeah, like every move they did, then they bring in TJ Brody and then the rumor mill started. They first started by signing Jason Spezza and I was shocked that I hadn't heard anything. Like it was lead up, it was like early October and there was no news about Jason Spezza signing. Like they can't let him go to free agency. Like he needs to come back. They need him if they can get him for league minimum. Even if they pay Jason Spezza a million dollars, I'd be like, "Please and thank you." Like did whatever. they? So they re-signed Jason Spezza. Then they went out and there was rumors connecting them to the Wayne train. They got the Wayne train. Very happy with that. They didn't pay him. Some people were rumoring that he was going to make like 2.25. And I was like, if he's making a hair over 1.5, it's an overpay. And I think he's at 1.5 or 1.6. Yeah, yeah. What number uh, is he? Do we know? We don't know. I don't. I haven't <sighs> seen it. Give me 71, I'll buy a well, that was Today, today I was on Cap me. Friendly, and they didn't have Marlowe at number 12 for the Sharks. It's like, we all know what number he's going to be. Why not just fucking give him 12? So <laughs> they ever announced Patrick Marlowe's number. Yeah, has anyone, <laughs> literal, serious question, has anyone ever worn 12 besides Marlowe for I the Sharks? Because so. they so. were an expansion. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah, no. And he's been so. there for pretty much ever. <laughs> um, okay, sorry. So they signed a Wayne train. They signed the Wayne train, and then before the day was done, they signed TJ Brody. Um to four years at five million, which was a very good deal. Uh, left shot defense, and they can play the right side, which everyone complains about them not having right-handed D. The issue is never 
can a guy just because he plays a certain hand? Matt, you play defense. What posi- What hand are you? I'm right-handed. What side do you like to play on? Left side. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like lacrosse, right? You're yeah it's... paddle in. Yeah, so obviously there is different, but if you learn how to play on your opposite side, you just become that much more useful as a player, mm-hmm. and you can become versatile because well, it's, it's easy way to play to on your on side. The, yeah, it's way easier to play on your proper side, but I just what? Because you have such I, a big shot, eh? Right, like just I do. So I'm looking for those one-timers all day. <laughs> He's like they call him the Shea Weber of beer league, actually. No, they don't. They do. I heard. They, no, I heard, no. I heard actually. Why is because he's slow or maybe it's that, not his it, ability to grow a beard? I heard in one single poke check he took this guy out, and this guy was like six four, like probably two hundred plus pounds. It wasn't a poke check. It, 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 it may have been a poke to the leg. <laughs> it was the back of the ankle. Oh, it was to it? the back of the knee. Oh, was this could have torn. Could have torn my ACL, MCL, and PCL all in one go. When you don't expect it, the guy jabs you with it. Unbelievable. The classlessness. Okay, back to TJ Brody for a second. One of the reasons I heard he wanted out of Calgary was because of the media. Now, when I heard that, and then I saw that he signed in Toronto, I said, oops, I don't think you think you know what you did there, buddy. You left Calgary because of the media. What is Toronto going to do to you? Whoa, 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 whoa. No, um, but I, I think the other thing, I think the Calgary media just has nothing better to do, whereas, like, Nobody takes the Toronto Sun seriously. Steve Simmons. When Steve Simmons says something, no one takes him seriously because of some of the stupid stuff he said, even this summer. Did you see, I think we talked about this last time, maybe one of you guys told me about it, how when Austin Matthews was asked a question like over like the COVID Skype thing, and it was Steve Simmons, he's like, I'm going to answer your question even though I don't respect your take and I don't like your journalism. And I'm like, oh, that's a professional. (laughs) Twenty. Oh yeah. Professional. Oh yeah. He yeah. He essentially he's like, yeah, I didn't respect what you did, but I will respect you enough to answer your question. Yeah. And just like threw him threw him completely well, under the bus. Just, come on. So. Um. So yeah. So Leafs continue signing guys. They get. Uh, they keep signing depth. They. Um. I, I don't even know all the depth they sign. Let me go look on Cap Friendly. I would be wild remember. if they signed oh, they, a guy named they, Nick Depth. They, That'd be cool. <laughs> they signed. Uh, they signed Zach Bogosian. Stanley Cup oh, champion? Stanley Cup champion! Zach Bogosian! He's been in one playoff. He's 100% winning cups. Exactly. In the playoffs. That's what you need. <laughs> uh, they signed Jimmy VC for one year, 900K. Dope deal. Uh, they signed Travis Boyd. Don't know who that is. Uh, depth, <laughs> depth sport. Real depth. Uh, Miko Lentinen out of KHL as well as uh, Barabanov out of the KHL. Barabanov. Barabanov. Is that one, two names, one name? No, first, uh, last name is Barabanov. First name is Alexander, of oh, course. Oh, no, I was just hoping it was Barry <laughs> Space Banoff. No, yeah. yeah, Barabanov. Uh, <laughs> and then they re-signed Dennis Malgan. Uh, but then they went out and signed Joe Thornton. Joe Thornton was basically linked to them from the beginning. It was, from what I've heard, it was it came down to San Jose or Toronto. And he felt Toronto had a better chance at winning than San Jose did. He didn't even think about playing anywhere else. Now... Are you telling me the Leafs' fourth line this year could be, could be Thornton, Spezza, the Wayne train? That's it could be. probably what it's going to be. That's, ooh. Is that not fun? Cup favorites, obviously. That's fun. They bring it's everything fun. you need on a line. So Some defensive depth, some grit, some tenacity, not so much championship a, a, caliber a playing. Whole, a whole lot of speed, too. <laughs> yeah. Hey, fast! <laughs> You know what? You know what? The, everybody said though is the Leafs. Nobody said the Leafs needed to get faster. No. Just needed to get bigger, stronger, and more experienced. You know what? It's gonna be fun when Spets is just trying to find a guy to pass to, and Thornton and Simmons are literally <laughs> standing in the goalie crease, being like, "I said it's my turn, no me!" And then they just they're gonna double tip. They're gonna double tip every shot. So, so Spets better be practicing his shot lately. After after signing Joe Thornton, what do you think the article was that uh, Toronto Sun came out with? Uh, ooh. Um, Do you know this? No, but I'm assuming something about how Joe Thornton's dad was always a Leafs fan. So no, now no. Can, now he can cheer for the No, it's fan. it's talking about... There's a picture yeah. of Joe Thornton in uh, Toronto Maple Leafs pajamas. <laughs> when I saw that no. for Tavares, I'm like, come on! What kid didn't have Leafs stuff? They sold it at Walmart. It was cheap and affordable. <laughs> um, My guess would be like... Uh, uh, hmm... Uh, you, you know what? Got it. It's going to be a long-winded one. I don't okay. think this is it. Okay. 
Joe Thornton can trim his beard, and Mitch Marner can now have a playoff beard. There we go. <laughs> Got it. Wow. You guys are far oh. off. Or something about questioning Thornton's leadership. Okay. That's so, the first thing that came so to my head, actually. It wasn't it wasn't Thornton's leadership that's now questioned. It's should Tavares be concerned about the Leafs' beliefs of his leadership because of the signings of the depth players? Because they went out and got Bogosian, who used to be an assistant captain. They got Joe Thornton, who used to be a captain. They got Jason Spezza, who also used to be a captain or an assistant mm-hmm. captain. Wayne Simmons also used to be an assistant captain. So... Is there too much leadership? Did the Toronto Maple Leafs believe that John Tavares did not bring enough leadership to the Leafs? I've never, ever heard of a team that says, you know what? They had a little too much leadership this year. <laughs> no, let's go back to the one year, that, the 99 or 01 Red Wings. That oh, team? yeah, I know. Come on! Uh, 18 of the goddamn players are in the Hall of Fame. The whole fucking team. It's, it's wild. It's That team is stupid. Okay. Simmons Sunday, Leafs signing of veterans and indictment of club leadership. There it is. Is that not the hottest take ever? That's nice. It's just Steve Simmons being Steve Simmons. You know what, though? <laughs> a contrarian. I love I love the title because you know the moment he's like, he gets a text from like a coworker like, Joe Thorne just signed up with Toronto. And he's like, mm, is it an... Mm. <laughs> and he like, what's his word? And it's like, mm. Indictment. <laughs> and then he built his title around the word indictment. He's like, gotta make it work. That's it. That's the word. He's like, what's gonna anger all Leaf fans today? It's like, well, this this is it. This is it's, the one. It's like Damian Cox when he was just chirping the Amara of draft pick. He's like, another small, undersized forward. It's like, he, the kid's 18 years old. You would have drafted me when I was 18. I was five foot seven. I was five four until I was 21. Yeah, <laughs> so exactly. Like we're fine. I was 5'8 at 14 since I was 14. So this is Christmas. (laughs) But, and it's just, it's, so yeah, on the TJ Brody thing, it's, I think you, I think you have to, I think it's a different monster, but I think that that room will handle it better than the way that the Calgary room does because there is definitely an issue with Johnny Goudreau in the Calgary dressing room. What do you mean? Like There's a lot of belief that they want to get rid of him. Oh, because of attitude problem. Well, he's overweight. He's I'm overweight. Scared. No, there was, oh. <laughs> there was a there was a thing going into the uh, the bubble that he wasn't in the first skating group, and it was because he was overweight. But it was it wasn't really a thing. It might well it might have been. I don't know. They they said That'd it wasn't. Be rough. <laughs> if they actually divided based off like body mass index, <laughs> I'm like nobody, you're uh, 15 points over. You're you're in group two. What? No, yeah. By that metric, hypothetically, and this is not a fat joke towards what I'm about to say. If the Jets had three groups and Bufflin was still on the team, would Buff only skate on his own in the third group? <laughs> they make a special fourth group just for him. Just the fourth group. There's no one in the third group, but Buff is in his fourth group. Yeah, that's that's a gap. Um, I think I think a lot of it has to do with Johnny the Johnny Gaudreau thing is just because he's not performing in the playoffs. But well, yeah, like your best players have to be your best players, and he's just not a playoff performer. What are you gonna do? He's got to shuts down in the playoffs. Yeah. And it's at that point that, like, not that size is an issue. The like, the vast majority of the time, especially in today's NHL, but in the playoffs, it can become an issue. When I mean, he's a star player, so you're gonna get targeted all the time. Like that's, and he's an undersized guy. Well, per se. Well, you, you and can't so say that. Though, look, away. At what, look at what Kane does in the playoffs. Every no, no, day. I like, know, but Kane perform. No, no, I'm saying, yeah. but Kane's used to getting targeted, and yeah. he thrives from it. Goudreau, playoffs are a different animal. Like, yeah. who did they play? The, okay, they played Jets. And then who did they play? Edmonton? No. no. Edmonton, uh, Dallas. Vancouver. Dallas. Yeah, so, like, Dallas is a pretty big team. And then who have, they played in the, who have they played in the past in playoffs? I don't even remember. But oh, either way, uh, yeah, I don't, I mean, he gets paid a lot of money. And you want to pay your superstars money to help. You get paid to win. And if he's not helping you win, what is he doing? Yeah, no, I agree with that. I didn't know that. I had no idea it was keeping you in that mediocre spot where you can't win any playoff rounds, but then you don't get any good draft picks, so you just stay mediocre like the oh, Minnesota Wild did. Sucks. For like week. the Minnesota Wild for, <laughs> for way too long. And now they're finally doing it. Um, speaking of rebuilds, Chicago Blackhawks sent out a letter to all season ticket holders saying that we are now embracing the rebuild. Yeah, it's about two years or three years too late. <laughs> they're now embracing a rebuild. They're now embracing a rebuild. Granted, they have like four really good young prospects in Kirby Doc, Kirby Doc, uh, Nylander, 
Who's that defensive guy? Number eight. Bockfist. No, no. Bockfist. Bockfist. Yeah, and yeah. then there was another guy too. Number five. Coco. He ju- they signed Coco? him again. They re-signed him. I have no idea. I'm trying to Wait. Think. Hold on. Did, Did Crawford? T- Crawford's contract is up, right? Yeah, he's, he's not with there. the Devils. Yeah. No. Yes. Two yeah, times Stanley Cup champion, one time Olympic gold medalist. Corey Crawford is now with the New Jersey Devils. And World Cup champion. <laughs> What's that? And World Cup champion, I believe, as well. He's in the does he's in the triple gold team. Yeah. No, he didn't win in World Juniors. No, not World oh, Juniors. Oh, there's no way he would have made World Juniors. Um, and if it was, it was 1940. But okay. So this. <laughs> years old. If you take like okay, Dominic Kulovic. Yeah, that's player. a guy I'm thinking of. Yeah, but he's Alex to bring it. Six. He's not much. Twenty five. Okay. Twenty five. But this is this is the core they're building around. Okay. Debrinket, Kulabic, um Nylander, Highmore, Strom, Doc. Did they, did they sign Strom yet? No. No. Um, that's who you build around, in my opinion. And you figure out what you're gonna do with Kane and Taze the next three years. Look. One of the uh, what do you do with them? Because once you get rid of that, even if you have to retain five million dollars of each contract, it gives you ten million dollars worth of room. I got that's it. That's how you embrace the, the rebuild. The thing is, is I they don't also know don't. They don't have a goalie right now. They're going with Colin D'Elia. <laughs> they're, spending, they're spending under two million in goalies, aren't they? One point eight five <laughs> in goalies. Malcolm Subban eight hundred and fifty. Colin D'Elia at one million. So they're signing a goalie. They're just no. Waiting. There's no one there. There's no one to sign anymore. No really. one's left. Well, who's the like free agent? Ryan Miller. Ryan Miller. Jimmy Howard are still there, but Jimmy like Howard. you don't have any. No one. Where did uh? Come on. Come here. And they Vegas tri- guy. Who? Flurry? Leonard. Leonard? Leonard's in Vegas. Vegas. Yeah. Oh. Five million, five years. So go after Flurry. Flurry? They're saying that he's staying there. Yeah. I don't know how they afford that team. No one. It makes no sense. How? I, you know what? I love and hate Vegas. Because he signed Petrangelo. They're They're still over the cap, though. Who? Vegas. Oh, yeah, I know. It doesn't matter. Just pay that, make that money, spend that money, baby. Uh, I like Bogfist, and I like actually the pickup of Nikita Zadarov for them. But Nikita they, Zadarov, they got two? Yeah, they traded Brandon Saad. Why did he leave uh... Colorado? Because he they traded to get Brandon Saad. Who traded to get Brandon Saad? Colorado did. Colorado now has Brandon Saad. Well, for half a year, and then he'll go back to Chicago, and Nikita's coming back. <laughs> we all know how Brandon Saad <laughs> trades work out. Okay, let's get be, let's be real. Why does why 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 how why are the Arizona Colorado... Coyotes over the cup or over the cap? They have eighty-four million in projected cap hit. What? Yeah. Hold on. Before we move on from this, what do they have? Like, why did Colorado anything? trade Nikita Zadorov? They don't have defense. Yes, they do. They have Captain Kale McCarr. What are you talking about? They just they just. Well, tell me, I missed everything. They, they traded for Devin Taves from the Islanders, who's a, a forward. No, is Devon <laughs> Taves. It's Devon Taves. Devon Taves. First Taves. Off. He's a forward. Did I say John? He's he's a D. Devon Taves. So this every is time their, I saw this him, is their defense cam. Okay. Okay. Eric Johnson. Sam Girard, Ian Cole, Devon Taves, Ryan Graves, Kale McCarr. Yeah, that's a pretty. I would take Zadarov on that team. I would too, but I wouldn't. I don't know who I'd be bumping. But Ian you, Cole. You gotta remember, they also have Connor Timmins. Yeah. Oh. And they have Bowen Byram, who's oh, yeah, yeah. The fourth overall pick. Like they, as as much as you want a guy like Zadorov, just because he's and mean, and Dennis Gilbert as well, but he's wait, where's Zadorov now in Chicago? Chicago? Yes. Oh, he doesn't get along with. Shifes. Shifes wasn't <laughs> happy about that. No. Move. No, actually, it doesn't matter. They're still in the same division. division. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Shifes. Damn it. Man. I was getting rid of him. Uh, I didn't so like yeah. Colorado that much anyway. Arizona with 80. Yeah, let, let's go down the list of Arizona's team. What other big signings should well, I know about? Taylor Hall going to Buffalo. For one year. For one year. I don't know why. <laughs> They're not going to make the playoffs. Because he. Wouldn't you want to play with Jack Eichel and just put up a billion points and get paid again? Yeah, totally. That's, that's fair, exactly why he went there. And they're that's one of, exactly why. They're one of very few teams that would pay him what he thinks he's valued. And you know at. what? The moves they've made, I don't hate their team right now. Other than the fact they don't have a great goalie. Like, Allmark, I don't know what he is. But, like, you look at that decor. That's a decent decor. Who's on the decor? Uh, like, Ristolan and Montour, uh, Darlene. Uh, they've got other pieces Those there. Those are actually fantastic three great pieces right there. <laughs> and then you look at their forward, like their top line of Hall, Eichel, and Olsen is going to be dominant. They need and to then... sign Olsen still. No, he sorry. went to arbitration. Okay, well. well they're, so they're going to sign him. Yeah. It's not like and, they don't have the money yeah, they to sign time. him. And then they have Reinhardt, Stahl, and Skinner. If Skinner has a bounce back year, man, this that's a scary looking team. You mean seven and a half million dollar 40 goal scorer Jeff Skinner? <laughs> you mean 9.25 million? Oops. 9.5. Really? 
9.5. Oh, yeah. I thought 7 was too much. For <laughs> Jeff, Jeff Skinner's making more than money than Taylor Hall. Yeah. Mm, good. I wonder how that sits he's making, with him. He's making $0.5 million less than Jack Eichel. Let's think about that for a did second. Jack, <laughs> earlier in the year, I, I heard that Jack Eichel like approached... Did we talk about this? Maybe with just you guys? But like... He approached Buffalo and said, "Like you better do something else. I'm gone. Like you, you yeah, he wanted, have to trade me." Yeah, yeah, he did. I, I think that I, mean, I think he wants action. Time. And honestly, how long till Connor McDavid does the same thing in Edmonton? They're at least making playoffs. That Chicago series was a bit of a fluke to me. Oh, it was. But at the same time, is Edmonton a good team? No. Is there anything to be optimistic about in Edmonton right now? Like, who do they have coming through the pipeline? Who do they have? have Ma- Yamamoto's a good young player. Yeah, but not that good. Like, he'll be a top six guy. You might put he'll him on a wing with McDavid. Three. They have. They had, I looked at their lines the other day. It was like McDavid, Nugent Hopkins, and I can't remember who was on the right side. And then it was Dreisaitl, Yamamoto, and Ennis. And then they had Cassian down on the third line. They so have you're that. making they Ennis, if you're having Ennis play that... Hold on, don't they have that on Andreas But you put Ennis with two good guys. Like, he's a, good, a skilled enough player that... Yeah, oh, um, yeah, you're right. Did they re-sign the Detroit kid? No, Anathanas Did you have to, James uh, Neal on there? James Neal was in there on in, on their third or fourth. I don't have to say you got... Yeah, he's not. They're not going to sign him. Okay. I don't yeah. know if anyone's going to. They, he wants too much money, I think. Probably. And he's not that good of a player. He's not worth it. All he is is fast. He's very fast, though. He's fast. Um, and they still need to sign Ethan Bear with absolutely zero money right now. Right? right? I don't know why they went and got Taysom Berry when they can't sign seven hundred. They have seven hundred thousand dollars in cap space right now. But you have McDavid, Drysaddle, Nugent Hopkins. Okay, that's fine. Then you have the James Neal contract, which is too bad that he fell off a cliff the way he did. Uh, Zach Cassian, serviceable. Alex Chason, meh. Nothing. I think special it was Chason was probably on the top line with probably. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. The Nugent problem Hopkins. is, is like. So they put Yarvi coming back for two years. Is he going to do? Who it was? It was they, on the is he line. doing anything? Is he going to be good enough? You know, we'll see. I have no idea, man. But like, none, nothing from their. I don't look at this lineup and say, "Oh man, they're a scary team." Other than McDavid and Drysdale, and you, maybe Nugent Hopkins. Okay, but thinking outside, the, we're not outside, but like thinking from a different perspective here. Being McDavid, like being a number one pick, you know that your team's going to be bad for a few years. But if you're good as a number one pick, you're also a detriment to your own future because that means, like, they made playoffs his first year, did they not? Second year, second year, second year. They might have because he got. But it's like so. The years. better you are as a number one, that means your future is going to be into question. Well, kind of, I guess. But then that's just you need your GM to do his job well, of that's, signing that's people. That's but they I, haven't done a good enough job of surrounding him with talent. Yeah, that's uh, yeah, yeah. I and guess maybe, I'm only thinking from the draw. But like realistically, like Edmonton is a place that has a brand new arena. They've built up around Edmonton's arena quite well. Like it they should hosted be, playoffs. It, it should be an They're, easy pitch to free agents to say, "Hey, come here." Their only here. problem is they need a goalie. Because if problem. you look at we it, guys, I've never heard. No, of no, no. Them. But if you look at the way their teams built, it's not much different than the Pittsburgh teams that were winning a couple yeah. of years ago, or even when they won. Bunch of no name guys. A bunch of no names with superstars like Kunitz and Dupuis. Who the fuck were they till they got to Pittsburgh? Kunitz had won a cup with Anaheim, but was playing on their third or fourth line. Dupuis was literally wasn't the, an Olympian. Dupuis was the throw-in for the Hosa deal. Yeah. And they just gel with Crosby. Like, you just have to find guys that gel with these players. The problem is, is McDavid and Dreisaitl like to play with each other too much, and they're too good when they're together. Yeah. Uh, and, well, and they just, they don't... You also, the Pittsburgh teams that had good, that were good, they had Sergey Gonchar and Chris Letang. Well, and, yeah. And, you had, and yeah. then you had Letang. They, they had, look, like, look at that, five, look at that every, year when they won when Ron Hainsey was their best defenseman. Like, let's be real here. Yeah, like, that's true. Every <laughs> team that wins, though, you basically have, like, five core guys, and it's usually, like... Two or three forwards, one or two D, and a goalie. And the odd time it's a goalie. Like you could get away with winning a cup with a with an average goalie. I don't know many teams. I don't Actually, know many never teams mind. I take that back. Yeah, I just yeah, thought about that's the last. When, year. when everyone says you would have to go with a one A one B situation, I don't believe that because every team you look at, it's a good goalie that wins the cup. Vasilevsky played every single game of the playoffs. Yep. Was the only goalie to do so, and look what happens. They won. They also had monsters in front of him. Monsters. And was it the year what? before with Washington? Mean, Victor Hedman. No, yeah. a year well, before. Vi- they was, had Victor uh, Hedman. St. Louis with St. Bennington. Louis. And Bennington just came out of nowhere. Had, yeah. And the year before that, Hopi had the best playoffs he's ever had. Like, it's just, you have to have a good goalie that gets hot at the right time. That's all there is to it. And then Pittsburgh was just like, hey, Fleury, you're doing great, by the way, but we're just going to we're gonna throw Matt Murray in. Sorry. 
And we win! We didn't talk about that either. What, Matt, Matt Murray, Murray going to the Ottawa Senators? Yeah. I was just happy he didn't go to the Leafs. And they signed <laughs> Dadden off too, which I yeah. like that signing actually, so... Ottawa could Ottawa. be good, guys. I, not this year, but two, I don't, three years. I still don't like picking Jake Sanderson over uh, Jimmy Drysdale. But what I have heard... The thing heard, is, is you have a, he's a defensive defenseman, right? Where you've already got your butt. You don't need another Jamie Drysdale. That's true. That's the, the thing, the thing about heard. Sanderson that I've heard is his ability, his gap control is really well. The way they use his stick is really well. And even from like 15... He's got satellites for years. Like those things are huge. You know why? Because he closes his eyes and he's sonar hearing. He's a bat. He's like Batman on the ice. But he can only hear puck. And that's why his gap control is so big. And he uses his stick as if he's blind. You know what I mean? And, but it's only to find the puck. I'm not... Mm, I've I'm never not even this seen this kid in my life. <laughs> I don't even know what you're talking about. I just so heard US, U.S. development defenseman. Oh, He champion. went fifth overall. Okay, he went fourth centers. overall. Fourth overall was Lucas Raymond. Never even heard of this guy. Yeah, he's from Sweden. Is it Mason Raymond's son? No, he's from <laughs> Sweden. Hmm. Uh, before that, third overall was Tim Stutzel, who broke his arm. Yeah, training. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, he got Did they know that when they drafted him? No, no like, it happened after. Oh, no! days later. Yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, obviously, second overall was Quentin Byfield. First overall was Alexis Lafreniere. By favorite one, two, the Kings. And number Kings. 10 was nice. Cole Perfetti. Cole Perfetti to the Jets, which... Cole Perfetti or Perfetti? To them. I thought he was going, like, Perfetti. fifth or sixth. Well, so that's what everyone thought. And then Buffalo was all like, what's the 1,000 IQ play we can make here? Jack Quinn? Jack Quinn. Instead of picking another center. Because they had Marco Rossi or Cole Perfetti. And realistically, it's not like Jack Quinn's a bad pick. Do not get me wrong. He might be the best out of the three. But at eight, you have an opportunity to pick... One of three centers. Granted, I think Anton Lindell is probably the weakest of the three. Weak but offensively, he'll be yeah. the best two-way center of the moment. But you have the chance to pick another center. And it's never bad to have centers on your team. Look at Auto- or Edmonton. They have 1A, 1B, bang-bang centers. And realistically, sometimes they just play them together. And sometimes, if they really want to get crazy, they take another guy they drafted first overall named Ryan Nugent Hopkins. And they're like, let's throw all three of you guys on line. Because we have no one else. That is it. We have one line. Your average draft position between this one line, 1.7. <laughs> so you're telling me Buffalo is going to put number one draft picks on the same line? Um, and no, Last instead, Stalin instead... is a forward now. <laughs> <laughs> no, but instead, they, instead of picking a center, they went with Jack Quinn, who is the next best ranked winger. Instead of, they passed on Marco Rossi, who's probably one of the most skilled and has the biggest quads I've ever seen on a human being. Greg? Um, they he's, show training videos during Greg, the draft thing, and his quads 18. were big. We could get in trouble for this. Be careful what you say. <laughs> Just talking about his quads? <laughs> you know what I didn't see about Cole Perfetti? Was his big quads. Did not see big quads on Cole Perfetti. What did you see on Cole Perfetti? Great hands. High that was that was his high hockey IQ. Big brain, big, apparently big brain, big brain very hands. smart. Yeah, he's a uh, he can do a Rubik's cube. Yeah. What? Yeah. Oh, okay. In like worth in it. like in like five minutes or something. Yeah. Just five like, minutes. Like though, like a minute. Less, I'll give you a year. Hour, honestly, <laughs> I've never done one. <laughs> yeah. Don't want to either. Don't care. And then Lindell went 11. 12 was uh, obviously the goalie Rossi. Askarov. Oh. And then thirteen with Jarvis. Fourteen was. Okay, so who over in, oh, in the first round? Who got the best bang for their buck? Uh, Minnesota Wild and Winnipeg Jets. Who'd Minnesota take? Uh, Marco Rossi. Right he's Jets. probably he's probably a couple more years away than he's probably two to three years away, but he's a center that can slide in and build. He'll be a one-two guy for them. And Cole Perfetti is another guy that he'll be. The perennial number two center behind Mark Shifley for the majority of his career. Yeah, he'll be the number one center if they put him with Ryan Hughes. I'm just throwing that out there. <laughs> what you could They'll do. have a one A one B line. <laughs> oh no! What a shame. What? We have too much of a good thing. No. How dare we? Well, how you fix the too much of a good thing? Just trade Shifley. He's getting old. You want him? You know what you do you is want. before you give him another contract, you just say, "Hey, Shifley, if you don't sign for six point one two five again, <laughs> you're dry, you're home. Sorry, sorry." No, but at that point he'll be like, "Okay." But I want ownership in this team. Yeah. <laughs> I want, in my contract, I'm the next GM. <laughs> Mark Shifley, general manager. I could, I could see him eventually general being manager management. 
Who is he? Mary Lemieux? <laughs> Bobby Bobby Hall back in the Winnipeg. Bobby Hall, yeah. Yeah. Oh boy. I choose who I want to play with. <laughs> oh, like he does. Hey Wheeler, do I know you're forty two. Yeah, like he doesn't do that already. Yeah. <laughs> like hey, I know you're forty two, Blake, but can you come can you come play? I miss you. <laughs> How old is Blake Wheeler right now? Thirty three? Oof. Oof, oof, oofity oof. Maybe maybe thirty. I don't know. I don't think he's that old. No, he probably he's probably thirty two or thirty. Okay, what else have we missed? Do we do I miss any other big signings or any acquisitions? The Jets traded for Paul Stastny. Yes, a little they did. Blake Wheeler is thirty four. Yes, he he's thirty four. That makes eight point two five for the next four years. Yikes! I, I thought it was nine, so it's not that bad. Kyle Connors seven point one. Patrick Laine. What do they do? Okay, Patrick Laine. Okay, he's not getting traded. There's no, no. way. Just, they no wouldn't have gone. They wouldn't have gone Stasny, and you're right. No one's offering enough. Realistically, the ask would be what Ivan Provorov, Joel Farabee, and hey. probably Morgan Frost. Hey, don't bring the Fly guys into this. Well, the Flyers never, are the only they team never linked wanted, to it. Yeah, but I could tell you the trade that they wanted. It's not. There, there's no Andrew McDonald in this. Hey, hey, hey! It's not even a part hey, of the team hey, anymore. Hey, let me get there. <laughs> you don't. Don't just. Hey, let me tell you what we're offering. Okay. Nolan Patrick. No. Wait. No, let me finish. Just let me talk. <laughs> Nolan Patrick. Okay. We'll pay his contract. You just please take it. Please, please, please. He's only making 850 That's 000. fine. You could have Faraby as well. Okay. But you have to throw in Perot because no. Perot and him oh, don't sure. get along. So sure, we'll take fine. Perot. Full contract. Oh, wow. Okay? Okay. 4.1. You could have Gosses Bear as well. You could have a retired Matt Niskanen. <laughs> and you could have a definitely retired NHL veteran <laughs> Robert Lewis game, Andrew McDonald. And I'll even throw in a first round pick. But what I want from you guys is Perot. Wait, what am I trading for again? I got the line and Perot. Oh, can I? I switch out line at the last sec for jo- uh, Josh Morrissey. Oops. Yes. <laughs> Shake my hand. It's a deal. <laughs> I, I completely forgot I was trading for Lina. <laughs> like, halfway through, I'm like, wait, is this from Morrissey again? <laughs> so we're getting two retired defensemen. A guy that can't play defense, but somehow is a defenseman. Joel Farabee and Nolan Patrick, who is LTIR. I said, and a first round pick. Oh, yeah, for a team that's going to finish in the top five of the Why don't they just put Ghost of Spare forward and see how that works? Because defensively, it's just. Uh, not I don't know if you know how the Flyers draft. <laughs> They're always. Dr- they don't even call defensemen defensemen. They call them. Yes, uh, out of the University of Union, out of Philadelphia, we are drafting our fourth forward, Shane Gosses Bear. That's how the Flyers draft. Uh, Samuel Moren, you might know him from defense. He's not playing that here. <laughs> he is just our second backup left wing while he's on the ice. Someone needs to back up James Van Riemsdyk. Okay, say, okay, dude. Um, uh, Travis Sanheim, like yeah. in the in one of their in one of the playoff the two playoff matches that they had, I think. In one matches. Of them, I, well, I how remember. much soccer have you been watching? <laughs> lots, lots, it's lots. It's a game. Lots. It's not a match. Okay, in the game, one of the games. Every time I watched Sanheim touch a puck, he was leading the rush, and I'm like, hey, what what are we doing here, <laughs> guys? He was supposed to be the defensive one on the line. What's happening? And then I just see Voracek, like, slotting in on D for him. And I'm like, oh, this is going to be great. Good. I'm glad we're getting our money's worth of Jake the Snake over here. Fantastic. At least someone's you didn't. You didn't know when you signed him that he's actually a defensive defenseman. Jacob Vor- yeah, Jacob Jake Voracek. Voracek, yeah. Well, pff, Little mean, did you know that Jeff Carter for Jakob Voracek deal is going to be uh, a defenseman and for a forward. How, speaking of cap trouble, how many guys do the Flyers have over five mil on their team? Because it seems like everybody... On their team gets made five mil. What's their cap? A hundred million dollars? There's so many guys over five mil. Do you want to know something? Like, name them off, because I really have to know the Do answer. Do you want to know where the flyers? The flyers are like middle of the pack in the NHL. They still four point eight million dollars in cap space. Yeah, don't tell them that. They're gonna sign someone for ten point five. <laughs> well, Mike Hoffman's still out there. Oh my god. Travis Hamonic's still out there. I wouldn't. I would not be against Travis Hamonic whatsoever. Okay, so you have Claude Giroux making eight point two, seven five. Yeah. Jakub Voracek making eight point two five. Yeah. Kevin Hayes making 7.1. Mm-hmm. James, mm-hmm. <laughs> James Van Riemsdyk making 7. Hey. Where's, all, where, where's all this money? That's what I'm what telling you! Fuck? Wait, he's not even done! <laughs> Travis Konechny is making 5.5. For now? <laughs> for the next 5 years. Oh, good. Oh, thank yeah. God. Thank God. Uh, Sean Couturier is making 4.33 for the next 2. They have Oscar Lindblom. I don't want to know what three. happens. When he, that two years. They ago. honestly, they don't have a forward that's making less than a million dollars. I know they don't. <laughs> they only have eleven signed, but the only guy that's not is Joel Farabee, who's on his entry level deal. 
That's yeah, it. For now. Everybody else is making more than a million. They're probably at Ken even, even like Russia even cash out Nicholas of Nicholas Ab- Abe Kubel, oh, Kubel is making 1.075 million. Yeah. Their defense, however, only has one player making over 5 million. Yeah. And it's Ivan Provorov. Is it? Yeah. What's Provorov? 6.75. Oh, yeah, for a long time. Yeah, for the next five years. Yeah. Because I remember uh, Provorov originally, I think, like, he was, I think he wanted to go to arbitration. And then I guess his, uh, the Flyers are just like, how about we'll give you, like, two extra years? 6.75. He's like, 6.75! And then he slid a piece of paper across the table, like, to the Flyers. And he's like, I played for three goddamn years. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew McDonald. <laughs> Radko Gudis. <laughs> and then even even Fletcher and all the all the Flyers brass are like, who are these guys? He's like, right? <laughs> pay me my money! You're going to pay me after this contract. So the next... Oh, God. I don't want to know what Kutz <laughs> and Provorov are going to get paid after that. Uh, so scary. yeah, Shane Goss is fair at 4.5. And then after mm. that, it's peanuts. Travis Anaheim at 3.2. They... Mm, go. Mm, they don't have a single player on their team. Single player on their team who's not playing under their entry level contract who's making less than a million dollars. Well, hey, I mean, when when you got good brass who know what they're doing, <laughs> people get paid. They have to be. <laughs> they have to be the only team in the NHL that has no buddy making less than a million dollars. Well, fun fact for anyone listening: How much is or all of you guys? Paid? Oh uh-huh. my god! Uh-huh. It's at the end of this year, so we'll find out. How much space do they have at the end of this year? Do you want to tell me real quick? Because I'm going to give you an answer, because that'll be the answer. <laughs> 20, 21 million? Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. But these are the guys they have to sign. Yeah, okay? Okay. Uh, Scott Lawton, who's going to make probably four. Yeah. Michael Raffle. Cares. Travis Sanheim. Sanheim. Eric Gustafson. Sanheim will get paid. Raffle will walk. Brian Elliott. Carter Hart. Brian, get be, be real. Brian Elliott can walk. They're not going to sign him. They're bringing back Lawton, of course. Okay. And uh, not Scott. Or no, no Layton. Michael Layton. <laughs> Nolan Patrick. Samuel Morin. So they're D core. Yeah. Uh, I'd be shocked. German if Rubitsov. He's an RFA. He's Hold in on. the minors. Hold on. Don't look up his draft because I remember that one. <laughs> that was a bad one. Well, I kind of want to look up his draft. I, what do you mean? What year was he drafted in? I Ooh, forget. 2016. Go to that one because I'm pretty oh, sure. Oh, this is like the deepest draft we've had in I'm pretty sure memory. there's some bangers immediately after <laughs> German Rupsov. Because I remember they're like, yeah, out of the QMJHL or whatever, the Russia Second Elite League here for juniors. <laughs> We'll draft German rips off, and I'm like, oh, cool. This is going to be so good. Tell me who went after him. Just in his own round. Yeah, are there any bangers? I remember there being a pretty good one. Okay. Uh, right after him was Henrik Borgstrom, okay. center for the uh, Florida Panthers. Not so bad. Uh, left winger for the Anaheim Ducks, Max Jones. Okay, I'm okay with that. Riley Tufti, Tage Thompson, Brett Howden, out of Winnipeg, yep. uh, Lucas Johansson, Trent Frederick, Sam Steele. Oh, Sam Steele is like probably the biggest one. There, mm, but yeah. Cameron, no, I I remember there being a real good one. Uh, oh. Jordan Cairo. Okay, that's not too bad. Never mind. If no, 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 no. There is a real good yeah, one. I found it. You know who it is. <laughs> oh, no. I found who, it. Who was playing in the OHL that year? And was absolutely disgusting. And somehow he slid to the second round. He may have been playing with Ryan Strom. Playing with Ryan Played Strom. Played for the U.S. in the um, he did World play. Juniors. Yes, he did play. He got cut that year. No, he was played. He played. Or was it the year after? Alex Dabrinkit? Yes. Hmm. <laughs> the second no! round. No! <laughs> really? <laughs> when, oh! Second, but you know what's even worse? No, 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 Okay, this is how the second round went, Cameron. It went Toronto, then Edmonton. Toronto picked Igor Korshkov. Then Edmonton picked Tyler Benson. Then okay. Buffalo came in and picked Rasmus Usplund. Okay. Oh, then another Columbus. Rasmus. That's what they need, more Rasmus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then uh, Columbus picked Andrew Peak. St. Louis picked Jordan Cairo. Philadelphia <laughs> traded the Winnipeg Jets to have the opportunity to pick Pascal LaBerge, then Tampa Bay picked Libor Hijek, then Florida picked Adam Masharin, 
And then out of nowhere, Chicago was like, you know what we need? Alex to bring it. Oh. Philadelphia passed on him not once, but oh. twice. <laughs> to, to be fair, but twice. In, also in that second round, they may or may not have drafted Carter Hart. So ta da! Uh, oh, we're all getting it. We got ta da. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Okay, that makes up for it. I feel a little bit. Uh, that is a pub stumper question for sports. Legit. How many NHL? We have to find the answer now. How many NHL teams have? I uh, have more or have a player paying getting paid less than a million because the Flyers are clearly uh, you could rephrase that better. <laughs> How many teams in the NHL is there not a player making at least a million dollars? Because that's Flyers, not in their ELC. Yeah, because um, the Flyers all of their guys. Oh my god! So the question was posed <laughs> well, I know earlier. The Jets have Harkins for seven hundred twenty-five thousand for two years. So no trade. Let the Jets. No trade. <laughs> no Give you Carter Hart. Okay. What do you think? Uh, by the <laughs> way, the Arizona Coyotes, the reason being is because they still have that Marion Hosa contract. So they're spending Oh, two yeah. Dollars. They pulled oh, okay. a solid. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't they do two solids? Didn't they buy out uh, Datsuk? Datsuk as yeah, well. yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they didn't buy him out. They just, he just didn't report. So like, well, we don't have to pay him, right? And they're like, well, yeah, I guess not. <laughs> and they're like, but we... Uh, okay. <laughs> like, it's funny. You go to these other teams, like uh, uh, Pittsburgh Penguins. Guys making less than a million. Teddy Bluger, Sam Lafferty, Mark Janikowski, Evan Rodriguez, uh, Chad Rudell, Rudwell. Like, it's pretty common. A whole line. Okay, yeah. so wait, wait, wait. Also, back to the Arizona Coyotes. Can we talk about how much of a tire fire this franchise is right now? Oh, I, yeah. I because last time we checked don't up, want to. what happened to um, what happened place. to their GM? Uh, John Chaka stepped down. Why? Because he was offered a job. By Brooklyn Nets. Yeah, like, he was going to be the, what is it? The fancy stats called again? I forget right now. I'm Advanced losing. metrics guy? Yeah, whatever it is. Okay, fancy stats. Fancy stats. That works. He was going to do it for, like, the NBA, the NBA, the NHL. ML, like Because they, they own, like, four franchises, whoever, like, the yeah. the owners there. So yeah. they wanted him to do all of them. So they're oh, like, hey, bring in I have this opportunity to do this. They're like, well, but you're our GM, like. We want you here. We don't want you working for New Jersey now because this is what you signed up for. He's like, well, bye. So he walked <laughs> on his contract? Yeah. yeah. So as a manager, how does that work? Can Just Like, clear. is he allowed to go work for them Not now? until his contract's done. Which no. is? That is three, two oh, years. Is it three years? Two or three years. Three He's got two years. two or three years left on his contract. And he left that team a complete tire fire. Oh, between their... Okay, so they lost their draft picks for working out players when they weren't allowed to. Now, How many draft picks? I think they lost because they didn't have their first this year. So they lost their second, their they third. They lost their second, year. their third this year. And one, two, three and next then, year. Yeah, I think it's just one and two. Is it three? That's I think it's brutal. One, two, three, but anyways, so their fourth round pick this year, their first draft pick. Oh my god! Got uh, just got convicted for bullying. Oh, they have their second round. It's first and third next year. Okay, first and third. So oh, no, it's just first next this year. Never mind, sorry. It's just first. Okay, so what happened to this guy? So he got convicted of bullying a mentally disabled African-American. Yeah. What? Calling Person. him the N-word and... Apparently like, they... What the his fuck? Head. Yeah. And then they he like, took like a lollipop fun. and like was like moving him or like moving the urinal into a urinal and like getting a little piss on it and then giving it to the kid. Like, Who what? is this guy? I don't even know his what name. What the fuck? Mitchell something. Oh my God. God, yeah. like how much? How, like, so he's how many never mistakes can this franchise make? Is but he's that kid's never playing in the NHL. Like, there's no way they'll let that happen. Both the Coyotes and his university. I think because he's going to is it Duluth? No, he's going to uh, UND. UND, sorry. I think UND's <laughs> both UND's not one to. They don't mess around. Yeah, Mitchell Miller know. is his name. No, but they both said that they want to be part of this solution with this kid. They don't yeah. want to. They don't no. want to get rid of him. They want to help him. So, yeah. oh, but I don't know if you there. help somebody like that. You don't. <sighs> you're eight, you're pretty developed. Come eighteen. But like this is like growing up. He did it. I think. Yeah. I think this oh. is like this is like, like, like 13, 14. 13, 14. Oh, and but just... still, if I'm that kid's parents, I'm like, no, you don't get you don't get this opportunity to live a dream. Sorry, you you waste that away when you decide that you were more important than some other kid. If that's I found if I had a kid and I found out that he was doing that, I'd be like, no. No, that's all. That's it. I mean, you phrase Goodbye. it perfectly. Like when Goodbye. you when you think you're better than someone else, that's no. where it no. starts and ends. And like, that's what we don't teach people. We don't teach people enough of that. Like, you, there needs to be more consequences to people's actions. And unfortunately, he shouldn't. You know what? You know how you teach this kid? You don't let him go to UND. You don't let him 
be a member of the Arizona Coyotes. You don't let him go to training camps. You don't. No, sorry, you're done. Bye, bye. Show me, show me in five years that you've done, you've made steps. Well, he doesn't even apologize to the kid and nope. the parent. Like that's just no. Nope. He has he no remorse for it. Oh, I did not. I I didn't even hear about that at all. Like not even a little. He bit. was fourteen when it happened. But even even with the news, holy shit, that's brutal. Yeah. He pretended to be my friend and made me think. It made me do things I didn't want to do. In junior high, I got beat up by him. Everyone thinks he's so cool that he gets to go to the NHL. But I don't see how someone can be cool when you pick on someone and bully someone for your entire life. Whoa. So. Well, okay. Yeah. That is going to be something to follow. Uh, it's, yeah. yeah, it's wild for sure. Jeez. Mm. What else did we miss in the NHL besides the Flyers <laughs> overpaying everyone? <laughs> Flyers don't overpay everyone. And the Arizona Coyotes are, are a disaster. Even though those Kachina jerseys are. They're fire. Those Beautiful. Are perfect. Those are perfect. Actually, what we can briefly Wait, talk we about. haven't talked about the Jets at all. Like, in terms of, like, yeah, hey, did they sign anyone else? Yeah, yeah it's got, uh, Derek Forbert, who I think is going to be a good pickup because he's got size. and He's what a good defensive was, defenseman. Yeah. What team was he on? He was, he was on a, Calgary. Uh, but before he that, he LA, was uh, right? Drew Doughty's defensive partner. And apparently After let Drew Doughty go. Yeah. Um, that's about it for that. But what I will mention is, well, I just had it at the top of my head. Now it's gone. Dmitry Kulikov signed in New Jersey. Yeah, everyone. Dmitry. Okay, guys, stop. This is like the fifth guy you've said. It's like, where'd he go? New Jersey. Yeah, I know. <laughs> New Jersey got a bunch of players. And I'm still, really, I'm gonna watch New Jersey. And, and they still have seventeen million dollars of cap space. Wow. So you're telling me they're gonna get line A. No. no. Yes. No. I'll trade you. They still no. only have eight forwards signed. Oh. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So they're getting line. They have Nico Heischer, Travis Zajac, Kyle Palmieri, uh, Nikita Gusev, Andreas Janssen, Miles Wood, Pavel Zaka, Jack Hughes, Michael McLeod, Jesper Bratt is an RFA. And then they have P.K. Subban at $9 million. Ryan Murray, 4.6. By the way, he was traded from Columbus to New Jersey. For what? Cap space. What, like a fifth what is rounder. Columbus doing? Like, are Columbus they just... got a fifth rounder? No, no, but I mean, like, what is? What, so they've lost Anderson, they've lost Murray, they acquired Domi. They, I know they got, I know Wenberg left. Yeah, but he's he wasn't Florida. doing anything. Yeah, he's, he's in, in Florida. Florida, but like New so Jersey. Who are they replacing <laughs> these? Guys? Who are they replacing? No, they have to sign Pierre Luc Dubois, and yeah. they don't have the money for him. I think they have the money for him now. Yeah, but they do. That's all they have is the money for him. Ah, oh, that sucks. And then New York Islanders. They signed the singing whore. The singing whore? Jose. Little tongue oh, joke Jose. There, sorry. Josh Jose. That's terrible. I'm sorry. Bad <laughs> joke. <laughs> Yikes. Bad <That's>... joke. <laughs> I've really never bad. heard that in my life. My That's God. really bad. Josh you Never Jose. say that again. <laughs> that was a bad, bad, bad. But the, the problem with the New York Islanders is they have, by my calculation, $8.9 million in cash space. Guess the who you still have to sign? The Islanders. Yeah, but who do they still have to sign? There's two there that they have to sign. They're going to be worth money. I'm going to think, well, there's one guy based on Matt's <laughs> reaction, and I think they share the same name. Is Matthew Barsa? Yes. Yes. Oh, no. And then there's another There's a defenseman there that's going to need to get paid, too. Ryan Pollock. <laughs> I, I played against Pollock when I was eight or nine years old. He came in over the red line, took a slap shot. Didn't see it. Oh, you're the goalie, by <laughs> I the was, way. Yeah. I was a goalie. Yeah. Did not see it. That's crazy. <laughs> it was still... From the red line, it was still going up. And I'm like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> no one can shoot like that at eight years old. <laughs> and then it was in slow motion matches. Like, ha, 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 he. And he just felt the wind. <laughs> Sound like a jet engine taking off beside his ear. Okay, so you're telling me the Islanders are in some trouble. Oh, uh, yeah, but G- GM savior Lou Lamorella will get them through it. It's fine. Lou Lamorella, best GM ever. Aren't they still, they said they're still going to sign Matt Martin, too, or did he sign already? Uh, no, Matt Martin has not. They have to keep that the most expensive fourth line in hockey. In fact. <laughs> Although you, were, uh, you guys were talking about a few players earlier that there was another team that gave them a run for their money and like the amount of money that they were talking. They're about. almost if if they didn't have Michael Dell call at seven hundred thousand, they'd be the next team to be the, the fly Philadelphia, guys? Philadelphia Flyers. They don't have a player. So what are they going to do to make it work then? What is uh, GM Lulam Arello going to be doing? Lulam. Well, no one's taking the clutterbuck. <laughs> Contract. I'll pause before you keep going. 
uh, a mutual friend of ours, his younger brother doesn't really watch hockey, but he always heard Lou Lamorello. So he thought he one time finally saw him on TV and it said Lou Lamorello. And he's like, oh, I thought his name was Lou Lam. Arello. Because <laughs> that's how we always heard it. Lou Lamarello. <laughs> so it's GM Arello. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I remember him telling me this, and I'm like, what? I remember you telling me this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> GM Lou Lam Arello. Sorry. So what do they have to do to fix this team? I don't know if I can go. I don't know if it's a strength to go on after hearing that. <laughs> <laughs> You're, it's going to be hard to undo it now, by the way. <laughs> now, whenever I see it, I'm like, oh, well, oh, there he is. Um, they're going to have to f- <laughs> do something with the Andrew Ladd contract. Oh, jeez. Um, Ship him back to Winnipeg. There's Winnipeg. Cal Clutterbuck, Casey Zizekas, or Leo Komarov. One of the three of them have to go, and they'll end up on New Jersey. <laughs> it'll, it'll probably be Komarov. Yeah. No, be, no, it'll be no, it'll be Sezikis out of all of them because he has value. Uh, he has value, and he's only got one year left, and he's oh. the youngest. Okay, that makes sense. Then. Yeah. So they trade Sezikis for a pick, sign Barzal, and then where's some money for Ryan Pulak going? Coming from no especially because they're si- apparently they're signing Andy Green too. That's what I heard. Is Lamarillo's got deals from with Andy what Green. money? I don't know. You have none. I don't know. <laughs> And, and the, oh, the cap is locked in, right? For At eighty one five for the next year or two. Uh, they don't know yet for next year. They know for this year it's eighty one five. No, they, they locked it for eighty one point five for the next couple of years until they get back to normal. So it's at least I've the next heard, two years. I've heard it could maybe go up next year. Oh, if, but if they have way, money come in, yes. But it is right now eighty one point five, and the Islanders are in trouble. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> what did uh, Petrangelo sign for? Eight point seven. With the nine with the nine Vegas half, Golden Knights, <clears throat> my goodness! I like. Oh, by the way, Vegas's third jerseys are sweet, sweet, oh, sweet. Oh, that's what I was going to talk about. There, they actually the entire NHL is coming out with fourth jerseys this year, fourth? called reverse retros. Yeah. So there's already been a couple leaks. Eight point eight for eight Petro. Eight. Yeah. Okay. Eight point eight for eight years. Yeah. Just want to say this. Go. Here Here we are go. the top base salaries for twenty twenty one. The top eight salaries. No, the top base salaries. So just how much they're getting paid this year. Not their sal like how not their cap hit, but they're getting paid this year. Yeah. Go. Miko Rantan in at twelve million. Fair. Not bad. Well, Veskin at ten million. Crosby at nine point six. Justin Falk is making nine million dollars this year. Hey. Just so everyone hey. knows. Since day <laughs> one. We have never wavered. He's a folk and all star, <laughs> and he will remain as such on this show. How dare you? I forgot about that. We've been around for a while. Justin Falk <laughs> uh, is uh, makes sense that he's getting paid more than Petro because he is his replacement. <laughs> he literally took his number and flipped it. He's yeah. like, oh, it says I can't have your number yet. I'm taking 72. Oh, and then I guess we've got Tory Krug signing with St. Louis as well. Tory Krug signed to St. Louis? Yeah. yeah. Everyone still thinks Boston's going to be good, and I just don't see wait, it. Wait, wait. just lost a lot on defense. What, what number is Petrangelo on Vegas? Because 27. Not 27. Yeah, 7. He oh, he wore them junior. That makes sense. Okay. Ah, such an easy fix. Didn't even think about it. <laughs> ah, I missed it. Well, Cam, do you want to take us home? Whoa, whoa, one uh, more cool. second. One more thing to bring up. Oh, geez. One okay. more thing. Okay. I took screenshots of things to show on the I... podcast. Oh, okay. Perfect. Oh, no. Is he... Is... Craig Button's Canadian team rankings. Oh, oh do we wanna... God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we'll yeah, finish yeah. on this. Yeah. At this. Let's okay. finish on a low here. So does anyone want to say number seven and just get it out of the way? Sure. Ottawa. There we go. Okay. Number six. Winnipeg. Edmonton. No. Hey, two for two, Cameron. Number five. Winnipeg. Still not Winnipeg. Mm, Calgary? Nope. Vancouver. There you go. What? Right, Vancouver. Ooh, they'd be high up for me. Number four. Winnipeg. Still not Winnipeg. <laughs> Calgary. Nope. Montreal. Oh. Nope. Toronto? What? Have, he has Toronto at number four. Okay. Well. Okay, number fit, number three. Them? Winnipeg. There we go. Number two? Toronto. No, Montreal. wait, we just said Toronto. Nope. Calgary. Calgary. And number he one. He has number one. Okay, so see Montreal. the entire list. Yeah, I was, top I was quite line. excited to see that one, like, Winnipeg at three. I'm like, hey, it's not bad. Then I saw Montreal one. I'm like, oh, this list is bullshit. Okay, so <laughs> top to bottom, what is it again? Top to bottom. Montreal, Calgary, Winnipeg, Toronto, Vancouver, Edmonton, Ottawa. That's <laughs> rough go. I would not rank them that way at all. How would you rank them? If I, like, best to worst? Yeah. I would do Toronto, Winnipeg, 
Yeah, I do Toronto, Winnipeg, Vancouver. You gotta remember, Calgary's made some good Montreal. Moves. Like bringing in and Marshall then, and is no, a big deal. Yeah, no, Tana's and then Calgary, and then no, Edmonton, and then Ottawa. Per- Ottawa doesn't move. Ottawa doesn't move. See, I'm going to go Ottawa first. <laughs> Recency bias. Look what they've done. Has anybody else added a top four defenseman? Wait, a number one wait, center wait, wait, who's the summer? top four? We didn't talk about that. Just, Jake Sanderson. Top four. Oh. <laughs> He's just not right now. <laughs> right, no. the, the um, years got it, yeah. Actually, right. did you also see that uh, the Ottawa centers may have accidentally leaked who their captain is? Oh no, Mark Burrow. They, they they did a, it was a Brady Kachuk jersey, and then all of a sudden, all the, there was just a C on there. They're like, uh, wait a second. Um, did they? He has not it been too? announced. Oh yeah. <laughs> How have you seen their new jerseys? They went back to two D. They're very, very nice. Okay, well, I guess we have a few things to talk about next time then. Yeah. Um. So sorry. How did you rank them? You went one Toronto. Do- Tr- uh, Toronto, Toronto Winnipeg, Winnipeg, Vancouver, yeah. Montreal, Calgary, Edmonton, Ottawa. Okay, how would you rank them? Pretty much the same. Like, I got Toronto, Winnipeg one too because like I, yeah. I don't think yeah, they're totally. that far off from each other. I think they're very close and comparably. Yeah, I, I have I uh, Calgary, Vancouver, Edmonton, Ottawa. Is that how? Is that all the teams? Edmonton. I think Montreal. Montreal. I think Montreal. Oh, Montreal. I forgot about Montreal. Montreal. I put Montreal right where Edmonton is. Rankings wise, they're not I, that far off. I think Calgary. I think Vancouver's. I think people got really high on Vancouver because of their playoffs last year. Yeah, That's I think I losing. I think losing Markstrom is gonna be bigger than people realize. That's gonna be huge. Um, Tanev's a big loss too. He takes up a lot of minutes. Yeah, but I don't think Tanev is that great of a player. But I, I he was I put, playing. He was like playing Vancouver was, though, six. Like that I was Vancouver six. Pairing on. I go Toronto, Winnipeg, Montreal, Calgary, Edmonton, Vancouver. Um, I just, so we, all I would agree. love, I would love to have Edmonton six because I think their fans are over the top <laughs> rich coming from me, a Toronto Maple Leaf fan, but, but your team is still good. Yeah. Like, I, yeah. Yeah, they are. Yeah. Either way. I have to get going. Yeah. We all got to get going. Let's so thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, shoot them at the email last minute PC at gmail.com is where they find us. Uh, tweet the show at last minute PC. Find us on, you're here on YouTube. Check us out on all of our other uh, all of our other episodes. We've been doing this for six years now, almost five years. A while. A while. Yeah. Last Minute Podcast. I can't YouTube. wait to hear from Cameron. Uh, it's Luke. Oh, yeah, sorry, Luke. How dare you? I like how you remember this. <laughs> Luke, he's my liar. Number, he's my number one fan. Okay. That's why. Anyways, see you guys next week. <laughs>